Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice, and today we're going to talk about cholesterol or your lipid panel and how to interpret it. There's four basic components to cholesterol panel, the total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides, of which the total cholesterol is the least important of the bunch. You want to be less than 200 for your total cholesterol, but you're going to quickly move down to the next couple of lines, the HDL and the LDL cholesterol. The HDL cholesterol is your good cholesterol. You want to have more of that. And then an easy way to remember that is H for happy or H for you want it higher. So a minimum HDL cholesterol for a man would be 40 and for a woman would be 46. So you want to be greater than those numbers. A way to quantify a low HDL, say you're 35 as a man, how bad is that for you? Every one point of HDL below 40 or your target equates to an extra 2% increased risk in heart attack or stroke. So if you had a group of 200 people in one room, there was 100 people, they were exactly like you, your HDL was 35, everything else, blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking, family history, diabetes, everything was exactly the same. The other group of people, the HDL was 40, but everything else was the same. The group that had the HDL of 35 would have an overall 10% increased risk of heart attack as compared to the group of 40. So that's what an independent risk factor is, is it's independent of all the other risk factors. So very significant, even getting a two or three point increase in your HDL equates to a significant decrease in risk of heart attack and stroke. The next component would be your LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, and you can remember L for you want it lower or L for lousy. And there's three different targets we use. If you're completely healthy, we will use an LDL cholesterol of less than 130 would be acceptable, so you have no other risk factors for heart disease. If your LDL is 100 goal, that's when you have one or two risk factors. So say you're a smoker and you have high blood pressure or you have a family history of heart disease and you're overweight. So we add up, you've got two risk factors for heart disease, additional risk factors. So we're going to recommend an LDL less than 100 and most people probably should be less than 100. Then the most stringent reduction or the stringent goal would be for an LDL less than 70 and those are people that have pre-existing heart disease. So if you had a heart attack already, if you had bypass surgery, if you had an angioplasty, so you didn't actually have a heart attack, but you've got documented heart disease, or if you're a diabetic, uh, we want your LDL less than 70. As an interesting note, uh, diabetes is what's called a cardiovascular risk equivalent, which means if you're a diabetic and you're sitting at lunch with someone who's already had a heart attack, both you and the person who's already had a heart attack have an equal risk of having having a heart attack. So a cardiovascular risk equivalent, diabetics are at a greatly increased risk of heart disease. So we want their LDL beautiful as well at less than 70. Lastly is the triglycerides. And triglycerides is basically circulating fat. It's kind of an accounting trick. When you eat a meal, your body doesn't use it right away. It turns it into triglycerides until it can either burn the calories as energy, it can store it as fat, or it can turn it into glycogen or sugar to be stored in your muscles. Uh, people have a variable ability to convert their meal into triglycerides and then clear it from the bloodstream. And that's actually part of metabolic syndrome, which we talked about before. If you've ever seen triglycerides in blood, I worked at a blood bank in college and we would have big bags of blood, not little tubes of blood, and you would separate the red blood cells from the serum. And the red blood cells were dark red and that would sit at the bottom of the bag. And then the top half of the bag would be this yellowy, clear, almost look like urine. That's your serum or the water that the blood is circulating or mixed in. Uh, if you have high triglycerides, if you could imagine taking a glass of milk, putting ice cubes in it, letting the ice melt, and then giving it a light swirl, that milky, swirly uh, appearance is actually fat in your bloodstream. So we would have blood donations on people after lunch, and their blood would literally be cloudy, thick with fat, and that's pretty disgusting and obviously uh, not going to be healthy for you to have, have fat flowing through your bloodstreams. That's triglyceride. So when we check a triglyceride level, if it's not fast, that may be elevated because you've just eaten, so that's reasonable, but after an 8 or 12 hour typical fast, you should have your triglycerides less than 150. 
So triglycerides are circulating fat. Think of the milk and ice cubes swirl. Uh, that's gross. Uh, your HDL, think of HDL cholesterol as garbage trucks, and your LDL cholesterol is garbage on the street. So uh, we, if we have a low amount of garbage trucks, our HDL is low, then we need to have a lower amount of garbage. Uh, if we have a very high HDL, greater than 60, that's actually a minus risk factor um, or protective, and we can tolerate a slightly larger amount of LDL. If we have high triglycerides, if we have low HDL cholesterol and a perhaps a normal total cholesterol, it's sometimes difficult to interpret what a normal number should be or going from blood test to blood test, if one goes up and one goes down, uh, what you can do, there's a couple of things that we'll use. One is what's called a cholesterol to HDL ratio. So if you divide your total cholesterol by your HDL, say your total is 200 and your HDL is 40, that's a cholesterol to HDL ratio of 5. We want to target that to be about 3.5 or below. That means you're at a lower risk of heart disease. Um, another thing that we can do is what's called non-HDL cholesterol. And this was a recent uh, invention or recent uh, recommendation because we're seeing a lot more people with elevated triglycerides and that's an unusual phenomenon or used to be unusual but now it's fairly common and that can make interpreting the blood cholesterol panel difficult so we do what's called a non-HDL cholesterol so that is your total cholesterol minus your HDL so if your total cholesterol was 200 and your HDL was 40 again, then your non-HDL cholesterol is 160. And we use a recommendation of 30 points greater than whatever our LDL target is. So if our LDL goal was 130, we'd say a non-HDL could be 160. If our LDL target for someone with heart disease was, uh, was 70, then we want a non-HDL of less than 100. So those are different factors we can use when we have an abnormality in our blood or we have a significant variance from one lipid panel to the next to see how we're doing, whether we're better or worse. An additional test that you can do if we're not sure or if we're on the fence and I say, boy, I think I might want to put you on cholesterol medication, but your numbers are kind of close or maybe you're a little younger and I'm saying you're kind of young to go on cholesterol medicine at 35, uh, we can do what's called a cardio CRP or an HSCRP, high sensitivity or heart specific CRP. And what that is is a marker of blood vessel inflammation. If you have an elevated CRP of greater than three, you have a two and a half to three fold increased risk of heart attack or stroke. So another independent risk factor above and beyond everything else, if your CRP is greater than three, you will have a high likelihood of dying of heart disease. If your CRP is less than one, then you have a very low risk of heart disease. And a way to think of how we interpret this would be is if you came in at 35 or 40 and your cholesterol was high and I was thinking about putting you on medication, I might ask a family history. And if everybody lived to 100 in your family, I would be less inclined to put you on medications because you obviously have some good genetics. If you told me that everybody in the family died at 42 of a heart attack, you obviously have some bad genetics going on and I would treat you much more aggressively. So that's a way that we can do CRP. So I generally don't do CRP. We don't treat it specifically, but we use that in addition to your other risk factors and determine what our overall risk is and then determine our threshold for putting you on cholesterol medication. So a lengthy topic, very easy if we go back to the basics, total cholesterol less than 200, our least important indice, HDL cholesterol greater than 40 in a man and greater than 46 in a woman, most likely our best indice of heart disease, uh, LDL cholesterol less than 130, 100, or 100, depending on who you are, easily treatable with cholesterol medication, and then a triglyceride less than 150, that's part of metabolic syndrome and usually diabetes or pre-diabetes related. Dr. Greg Castello, thanks.